here we are again. This time I have Nico here with me. <laughs> Nico? Uh, I worked with uh, Nico. Actually, you worked uh, You worked for the 49ers even before I got there, right? I was 49ers 2013. Oh, so same year. Like the summer. Yeah, yeah so we, uh, we both started right when... They lost to the Ravens. Yeah, right Bowl. after, right after that. Yeah, and didn't get much better after that. Nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> but so, um, so you were. Uh, I remember you were at the store when I came there and had to get like the money and everything in downtown San Francisco, and I used to have to bring it to um, to Wells Fargo. Yeah, and so <clears throat> I'm sure that you have seen your share of. Uh, like the burglaries and like all that stuff that's there that they where they would just take that stuff off the shelves and run. Yeah, man. We had when I started, we didn't even have the store yet. We had that like a it was like a kiosk. That's right. In like the middle of the mall. That's right. And then we didn't like put the merch away either. We just covered it and locked zipped it up, locked it. And then people would, you know, just like lift up the cover, take the jerseys and run <laughs> that, and we we'd come back and just hangers are left so. I, re I remember that there was that place was always running out of kaepernick jerseys which was a very short problem yeah yeah <laughs> man you know he didn't like um i mean when we moved to levi's i remember we uh like triple ordered because of the the demand at the San Francisco area and like the kiosk that turns into the store later on. Yeah. But um you know, later on a couple years down the road when he started tanking, it was like remember we had those storage places in the in Levi's that were just full of Kaepernick jerseys. Levi's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You even like the that, atrium like, storages? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't even use those no more. Really? Yeah. What a Not shame. Really. Yeah. <laughs> There's there's a lot, there's a I won't say a lot but there was um a fair amount of cockroaches that called those rooms home at Levi's yeah yeah well maybe not that south one because we transformed that into the cash room later on you know but mm -hmm. um that north one where it was just pretty much solely storage yeah it was uh I mean a couple dead ones a couple of live ones you yeah. know they just Maybe they went there to die a peaceful death because there was no way they get <laughs> stepped on. You know, nobody ever went in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so, so let's go back to San Francisco. Did you were you there? Uh, so you were there during the store too, when it was actually the store. Yeah, rather so than just kiosk. During the kiosk, they pulled me to Candlestick. They pulled me to Candlestick. I was doing like five day, all my days there, and then. They go, hey, we're going to open up the store soon. So we, if you want to stay at the store, we can't keep taking you, you know? So they took like a, they took like a bunch of us. There was like me, Ryan, Forrest. Uh, there was some more. But then after a while, they were like, they offered the warehouse job to me and Ryan but then he took it. I went back to the store because I wasn't sure what would happen after the season. Mm -hmm. So I was at the store and then they would let me come back maybe like once a week. So yeah, the store the store was cool the first year. Yeah, the first year it was it was it was nice, but then <clears throat> man, I remember being there and I think it was Brian that was uh running things kind of back then. When I last time I was there, and uh, you know, he was like, Oh, here they come, shut the doors, you know. Uh -huh. And so it was, um, uh, you know, I was like, What the what the hell's going on? Yeah, you know, like, why would you shut the doors if customers are coming in? You know, because I yeah. was there to, I think I was there to like fix one of the registers or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I went to, I went to the door and then, um, you know, he locks it and all these girls come, right? And they're all like, Yeah, yeah. They all like are pissed because now the door's locked and they can't get in. Yeah. And um, he's like, 
y'all were stealing shit. <laughs> Cause you know, there's like <laughs> 10 or 12 of them. Right. Yeah. Who, who were they? I know who you're talking about. Was it like the I, rainbow girls or something like that. I, that sounds familiar. I think that was the name. Something that, that like that. That must have been right? a while though. Cause Brian didn't come until later. No, yeah, he was, um, it was right when, uh, I think he was deciding if he wanted to be, like, that store manager or not, and then yeah. he just decided no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And then he went to work with Chris. Well, because he only came because Palo Alto closed. Right, yeah. Yeah, he was the one um, that, one of the people that got spread around when Palo Alto closed, because remember the that tweet that went out that said, you know, that yeah. on the... The 49ers tweet, and then they were like, well, okay, we'll give you guys, we'll, we'll take you guys all jobs, and we'll give you jobs in the stores, jobs in the stadium, mm -hmm. you know, so on and so forth. And so, like, some people went and they worked in suites, and some people worked in merchandise, and some people worked at the various stores and in, in the malls and the strip malls and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think I think a couple episodes ago, I talked about that with, with Alan. Alan was on the show. He's been on the show a couple times. Yeah? Yeah. He went to the stadium. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, was, yeah, yeah. yeah, he was there, and uh, you know, he was talking about, you know, he's <laughs> folding socks, and um, <laughs> then like, of course, like Jed York and Trent Balky walk by, and so, you know, he's kind of like, he wants to say hi, but of course you can't because yeah, because unless unless you're talked to first. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to an extent, right? Just you just can't be annoying. Like I remember there was one person that just went up and like. And I won't say her name, but um, she just ran up and gave like Patrick Willis a hug. And it, she got fired on the spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right I on know the who spot. you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And um, then there was somebody else. Uh, they worked in the suites, I think, and they did the same kind of thing with, um, with Snoop Dogg. You okay. know, when he came over, I forget why he came over. I think maybe it was opening day. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, boom, on the <laughs> spot. Yeah. yeah. Just like th they just calculate it and they're like, okay, well, it's kind of worth it if I just, ah, it's worth my job if I just go say hi, you know? <laughs> Can you imagine? I, I cannot. I needed the job. Yeah. I mean, I need, like, why would you take a job if you don't need the money? Yeah. You know, I want to be in that. I want to be in their shoes. Yeah. Like, I'm terrible with interviews, so I don't want to do that. Oh, yeah. Well, well. Job I mean, interviews. You don't especially. have to like. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. It's it's just kind of a hassle. Interviews. Inter interviews, then applying, yeah. then doing the whole thing, you know, and the song and dance, and uh, but uh, you actually didn't you start with uh, start doing uh, firefighting? Yeah, yeah, I did. How's that, man? I'm. I quit. Oh, you quit. A little over a year ago now. Oh, shit. Well, wait, wait. How long were you doing that for? I got hired 2014. Oh, so nine you were doing years. it for a while. Yeah, nine years. In, in Were you doing it in San Francisco, like in the city? No, no. It was like a, like a small city outside San Francisco. Like uh, Brisbane or like South City or... Yeah, around there. Okay. Yeah. Man, so tell Man. us a little bit about that. What did you see? You save any cats out of the trees? Man. <laughs> huh? So I I don't tell people. I don't tell people that I did that. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never once, like when people, like when I meet new people and then they go, oh, what do you do for work? I've never said I'm a firefighter. Really? Never. I kept it a secret. Why? You're just like a, like a firefighting Batman? <laughs> well, your, your identity's like, out now. It's, yeah, I mean, I could say whatever now. It's but. Bruce Wayne. It was Bruce Wayne the whole time, everybody. <laughs> but it's just like my family knew, and my close friends knew. But besides that, if someone found out, it's because someone else said something. Oh, you know, I just never wanted to, because there's people in it for the wrong reasons. Just for the prestige kind of, I mean, it's, yeah. Like, you can get your, you can get hurt though, you know? So that's yeah. not kind of a thing to be in for the prestige. Yeah. And some people are in it for like the title. Oh. You know, like there's people that are like, uh, yeah, I save lives. I'm a hero. 
you know, and oh. they walk around like all pick up, and, pick up chicks. Yeah. Like to pick you know? up chicks with it. Yeah. So I've never, never <clears throat> wanted to be that. And then, and it's always like when I tell someone, you know, like how you just asked, like, oh, you save cats and trees, you know, <laughs> that's always like either one question or the other one is always, what's your worst call? Oof. Yeah. I and mean, then, yeah, I mean, I, I can only imagine, right? Somebody is dead. Yeah. You know, burned yeah. alive, uh, kids, babies, mm-hmm. you know, like the shit that you must see. And, you know, like there was a point in time when, I mean, you know, in 9-11, I, I remember because I, I was in like high school during 9-11 and the firefighters went in the building, and, yeah. you know, and the cops went in there and they, uh, paramedics went in there and the thing collapsed with a bunch of them in there, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I just... Like that's such a, it's such a selfless thing. And it's such a, you don't, you don't do that unless you're fully committed and you're fully dedicated, but it sounds like people are doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Cause man, like I've seen a lot, you know, like a lot that people shouldn't see, you know, like I've had, I've seen like shootings stabbings people jumping off high places you know and it's just like the first one the first few suck because it's all new you know and then after a while you get like numb to it and then you get numb to it to where like someone dies and then you're just like, damn, there goes another one, you know? And so then like when people ask, they're like, oh, what was your worst one? Then it's like, damn, everything com- comes back now, you know? Like I tried to like block that out, but. Yeah, that you see like, uh, you see kind of the worst, right? Yeah. You see the worst of people. You see the worst of what can happen to you. You see like the worst of the human body. And I'm sure like the first couple times maybe you probably wanted to throw up. Right, or you have mm. the stomach for it? The first few. It's not as bad as you think. Because I remember there was one, my first suicide. It was a, it was a girl. She drove up from like, I think like LA or San Diego. She was at the cemetery. And then it was close to gates closing. So the cemetery worker, he was like driving around and he sees her laying there. He's like, hey, um, time to go. You know, I'm about to close up. She's not moving. And then he, he was like, hey. Um, so he, he was thinking like maybe she was sleeping. So he walks over and then he sees that she's laying down next to like, we found out it was her grandma because she left. She had like a note. And then they found he found uh, like a gun next to her. Oh shit! Yeah, so we had to show up, and then it was like dark already, so we needed we needed like the lights, and it was like a just a I don't know that was just it was a lot of it was a lot of nerves. Yeah, you know, like she's already gone, but I was still like, damn, like she's really dead right there. So, yeah, that was that was the first one. But then I remember my first death. It was like a, one of those crazy storms, right? Mm-hmm. One of those crazy storms where, like, trees fall down, places flood, um, you know, like wires come down. So we get a call saying... Oh, a tree fell down on a house. So we show up, and then the guy that lives there, he's on top of his roof cutting the tree. Like, he was doing it himself. And then he's like, he waved us off. He's like, you guys got more important stuff to do. You know, he's like, I can handle this. So we're like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. So we're like, okay. We leave. He was was cutting it down so that it wouldn't fall on his house or something? It was... It was like, 
like a big branch fell on his house to where it was like leaning on it. Oh. So he was cutting that off and then just throwing it off to the side of the house. Mm. And then, so we go back and then maybe like a little more than an hour later, we get another call. And then we, uh, I was new. I was brand new still. So I'm not paying attention to like addresses or nothing. I'm just thinking about what are we going to have to do? Mm -hmm. You know? So we're driving and then we pull up to the same house. Pull up to the same house. And then we walk in and the wife that we saw, she said, um, the guy collapsed. The one that was on the roof. Oh shit. Yeah. He collapsed. And so we were we went in, started doing CPR, and we we worked on him for maybe like maybe like forty minutes. But then we lost him. We lost him and then it was like crazy because we just seen him like an hour earlier. Yeah, you you saw him, you talked to him and Yeah. And to see now it's just uh now he's gone. That makes it real. Yeah. So that was my first one. So we were driving back and then everything was just hitting me, you know, like how crazy it is. And then uh, one of my friends, the one of the more senior guys, he like asked us, he was like, is this your first one? Right. Then I go, yeah, this is my first one. Right. And then he goes, um, how are you feeling? Right. And I was like, man, this is, this is a lot. Right. And then he goes, if this is too much for you, I suggest you get out now. And then I go, yeah. He goes, this is not going to be your last. So if you can't take it now, might as well, might as well leave. Mm. So I kind of see where he's coming from, you know? And then, yeah, just after that, it's just everything was just. It's just work now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, you don't want to say it's like routine because it's obviously like these are lives, but this is what you're here to do. Yeah. You know, and like you were first on the scene. Mm-hmm. You know, firefighters are always first, right? Yeah. Not b- before cops, before paramedics usually. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that's you will probably see the worst of it. Yeah. You know, cause if, if it's a house on fire, cops get there just to ba- basically keep people away. Yeah. You know, you're there to go inside mm-hmm. and, um, you know, uh, paramedics are there, but they're waiting for you to bring them outside. Basically, you know, they're not going in there. They, they come in too. They not, come in the not, fires? Not the fires. Oh, okay. Not the fires, but like the regular, like medical calls. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, I know it's, that's, I can't even imagine, you know, maybe people that like, you know, people that have that people, maybe that are cops and paramedics and firefighters, people in the military too, to an extent, um, you know, like they see things that if everybody saw those, we wouldn't all be okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. So, you know, those big state fires. Yeah. I've been out to two of those right and then there it's crazy right because you don't know what's going to happen you're like your head's on a swivel you don't know if the like you could be sleeping and the fire could be coming up on like base camp you know so that and then one day they'll the they'll tell they'll give us an assignment and it could be like hey there's fire coming up this way we need you guys to put that out Right. So we're over there and then, you know, you could feel like, you know, like this is what you worked for. You feel like the badass, you know. And then after the work's done, you feel good. And then usually you get like the next day off. And then after that, when you're back on shift, they give you another assignment. And then they're they're like, hey, we're letting the public back in to their houses that are gone. So now you're like, help them find stuff, you mm. know, see what you can 
sift through like these like shakers, you know, like like their belongings kind of thing. Yeah. Ah, oh. man. So then you could like one day you could just feel like excited, and then the next shift you're just like, damn, these people lost everything. Yeah. You know, like all their cars are gone. The only thing left of the house is the fireplace. Right. So, yeah, those those are crazy. Shit, just, I mean, should we just make houses out of fireplaces? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, the, were you out the um, <clears throat> the ones in Paradise? Hawaii? No, Paradise, uh, well, Hawaii is Paradise, but I mean, <laughs> Paradise, California, kind of like up north, kind of by Chico. I went to... My first one was Humboldt County. Mm. And then my second one was Santa Rosa. Oh, Santa Rosa? Yeah. Yeah. I, those are, I, it's, uh, that's not a situation that I would want to be in. You know, I mean, it's just people are trying to get out mm -hmm. and get their belongings. And sometimes the road is just clogged with people. Yeah. And the flames are just getting everybody, people burning their cars, you know? Yeah. And um, during the Paradise fires, actually, my uncle, uh, he lived in Paradise, and he, um, you know, he was able to get out, mm -hmm. and um, you know, they were able to get their dog out and some, you know, family photo albums and yeah, things like that, and they got out. And uh, uh, man, so if I had my producer here, I'd have him pull up pictures and show you. But there, <laughs> it's just like you said, just basically like that concrete foundation is left. Yeah. And the fireplace. Yeah. And that's it. Maybe Everything's like, gone. Yeah. His like, uh, I think there was like a piece of a railing that was there, metal railing. Okay. But like everything else, toast. It yeah. was gone. Like the whole town was leveled. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like he was able to, uh, he was in a position to where he was able to buy back his land from the insurance at a, like a super low rate. Right. Okay. And, um, then he also bought his neighbor's lot because they were the prices were going down because people didn't want to move back. Yeah. You know, and so he kind of tried to turn that into like what you can turn into a positive, but you know, you do that and then there's no there's still no stores, there's still no gas stations, there's still no yeah. post office left, there's still no anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just a house now. Yeah. And um I mean, it could happen anywhere because this is California and, you know, we still have PG&E. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's really been, you yeah. know, they didn't even get a slap on the wrist, really. They're just going to charge people more and it's going to happen again. Yeah. You know, uh, luckily here we have SMUD and they're a little better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but no, they're, they're actually good. They um, haven't really killed as many people yet. So, <laughs> you know, that's a plus. But um, look at it. Yeah. And uh, I just got to think, like, when is the next one going to happen? You know, luckily we've had a lot of rain. Yeah. And so maybe we have a little bit of different problems now with, like, flooding and mosquitoes and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but. Usually it's like summer. Yeah. Like yeah, when well, it's hot and it's dry. and Yeah. It didn't have. Did, it, it, did we have a big one then last summer? I don't think we did. I don't know. Did we? I, I, I was already gone. Been out of the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've been out of it. Why'd you, uh, why, well, first of all, why'd you get in it? Man, why did I get in it? Uh, my cousin became one. He oh. became one first. So then I thought maybe like, okay, maybe that's something I want. Right. And then I got to do a ride along. And then the ride along I went on they had a fire. So I didn't get to do anything. I was just, you know, watching from far. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I don't know what else I should do. So then I went to school for it. And then that whole thing happened. And then, yeah, I got hired in 2014. And then, man, yeah, I did it for nine years. Why'd you get out? Um, it was time. It wasn't, I didn't have to drive for it no more. Mm. Everything felt like I do this because I have to, not because I want to anymore. 
And a lot of my friends that were with me, they ended up getting full-time jobs. So they left. So I was kind of like one of the last ones out of my friends. So yeah, we, we just kept hiring like new people and then I like didn't fit in with them. You, do, is, there's got to be a lot of turner, like, uh, turnover there, right? How many people have got there that were like, you probably had that conversation with people, right? That What's were that? like, this is your first. Yeah, yeah. And, and did some people turn away or did they all stick it out? Um, some tried to stick it out. A lot of them, a lot of them stuck, it, stuck it out. But then there was maybe two, two that left, not because of that, but because they couldn't do the job. Mm. Like they're not physically, they couldn't do the job physically. Oh, like yeah. not strong enough or? Not strong enough, not fast enough. Um, they're like a liability. Oh. Yeah. Like Shh. if you're on a call, you don't want to be with one of those. Yeah. <laughs> How that guy do the paperwork? Man. Yeah, it's it's hard. Like I just didn't want to be like that weak link. Yeah. You know? Cause then it's like I did enough to where I was on a call, like you wouldn't have to worry about me. Mm -hmm. You know? Like just give me the assignment and know that I got it. Like I don't want you to be like, Nico, stay at my hip, because you can't really Yeah. You know, you have to be able to handle things on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Like carry a person downstairs, you know, like, carry, mm -hmm. like, I don't know if like you can carry them down a ladder or something, but you put it, put them over your shoulder and yeah. Yeah. That yeah. shit's tough. Man. It's hard, man. Especially the ladders. Yeah. They're heavy. So it, if you can't, if you can't like get your arms up, it sucks. It, especially with all your gear on. Yeah. Terrible. How much does that weigh? Like, what, 60 pounds? Uh, it depends, like, how much you're carrying. Like, the gear alone, gear alone's already pretty heavy. But then the more stuff you add, like, some people will, like, most of the time you'd have to, like, carry an axe with you. Mm. You know, carry an axe or carry, like, other tools just in case you need it. So it just adds to it, and then... Still trying to do work with that sucks. In the you know? heat. In the heat. In the Always heat. You hot. Got, you got like your air bottle on you too. What do you mean? Um, like uh, like oxygen like a, to breathe? Yeah. Mm. It's like a backpack. Mm. And then you put it on. The, the bottles we had there was maybe, it's meant to last 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But then you're doing your work. And you still got to worry about controlling your breathing, you know? Because if you're, like, breathing in and out through your mouth, your 30-minute bottle is going to last 15 minutes. Right. You know? So we had we had a lot of training with that, you know? A lot of breathing training. <clears throat> like like controlling your uh, stress and your heart rate while you're trying to breathe? Or were yeah. they trying to stress you out and you have to try and control your heart rate? So, like, what we would do... They would black out, you know, like part of the station, turn off all the lights, move around all the furniture. And then they would say, okay, you guys are going in, you know, put your bottles on. We're going to cover your masks so you don't see anything. And then you have to go in with at least two, at least two people. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone, you know. But if you're going through, so you have like, you have like a, like a light gauge on your bottle and then it shows how much you have left, right? So once it gets to half, that's the sign you're like, okay, we need to go back out. And so there's like, there's got like, there's like some LED on the gauge because you probably can't see the gauge itself, right? Because it's supposed to be smoky. Yeah, but you can, the, you have your mask and then there's a, like four lights right oh. on your mask. And then once you get to half, you're like, we have to get out. Right. You know, because it took half to get here. We have to, you know, it's going to take half to get out. Mm -hmm. But then they always put 
a new guy with a more senior guy. But then because the new guys are all sucking their air, they go out faster, so it's them. They're they're at a quarter quarter tank left, but I still got three three fourths. Oh really? You know, so it's like, damn, like we didn't do anything. You have to just have like let them buddy breathe to get out then? Yeah. Yeah. We like we have to like connect our our hoses so it like levels out to where we have the same amount. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's a way to connect them. You don't have to like this guy doesn't have to like go over and like you put your mouth on his tank or something. No. Right? There's some kind of hose that connects them both. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. You guys have a fire dog? A dog? Yeah. Not the stations, but Man. a lot of people would bring their dogs over. Oh, really? Yeah. Like at the stations, I mean, the, there's because I, I was friends with a couple firefighters and, um, a lot of the times, you know, this is before all the big fires would start mm -hmm. happening. And so they said, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of times you're not on a call and you just hang out in the firehouse where you could, you must've been always on a call then. We, we averaged maybe like, maybe like a hundred a month, maybe oh. like three, four calls a day. Oh, wow. But then you can't. You can't get ready for it. You know, some days we'll have 10 and then the next day we'll have two. So. So it's like you got to keep that gear on a lot of the time. Not keep it on. It's just like we keep it hanging in the garage. Mm -hmm. And then unless it's like a fire or a traffic accident, you don't put it on. Or we just go in our, you know, blue uniforms. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, you would only put that gear on if you're going to get burned. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do you look back I, on it and, and you, what do you like, what do you think when you look back on that now? You're like, you must be glad that you got out when, before yeah. you got really hurt, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you look back, but like it, it can't, it can't be all bad. I know that it's, it, that's not something that you probably hear a lot, but there's got to be instances like if you save somebody and you go and like you see them and they're like, oh, thanks for saving me. You know, like. <laughs> so the hard part, the hard part with that is we're the first ones on scene, right? And we do our work and then the ambulance is the one to take them away, mm. right? Ambulance taking them, takes them away and we, we don't know anything about them after that. Uh, like say we could we could be doing CPR on someone and we get their pulses back. They could die like on the way to the hospital. Mm -hmm. But we would never know. Like they don't come back to tell us like, hey, that guy passed away. You know? So once they get to the hospital, it's just like, it's out of our hands. Yeah. You know? Is there any time when you've had some kind of personal interaction with somebody that ha you've helped and they had survived? Not me personally. Oh, really? Yeah. Just because I'm like, I'm not very good with people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got too I'm hard not on very yourself. good with people. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm a people. You're good with me? <laughs> Man. Yeah, that's why I don't, I didn't tell anybody about it. Yeah, I'm, well, I mean, it's, you are the kind of person that is not the kind of person you're talking about. So you're, you're the kind of person that is going to do something like this and not take any credit for it. Yeah. Not take, um, even the credit that you deserve, which yeah. is a lot, man. you know? And, uh, like it, the world could use you as a firefighter. You're a big dude, <laughs> you know? And so man, like, thank you. um, you know, it's good that you did that, you know? And like to do that and not, 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 not have any accolades or ask for any praise or flaunt it out there because yeah. I know that I know that some of them do a couple of the friends that I had that were firefighters mm -hmm. did, you know, yeah. I mean, that's not why they did it, but I mean, they did it because they liked it and everything, but they still like, they're proud of it. Yeah. You know? And like, yeah, you don't want to like, you don't want to be those douches that are like, Hey ladies, yeah. I'm a firefighter. Man, I remember you know? 
I was working Starbucks at the same time. And I didn't tell any of my coworkers, right? No, no one knew about it. And then this was Second Street, downtown San Francisco, right? And this is like during rush hour, so there's like a long line of people. And then this is maybe, honestly, maybe like 10 in the morning. Like we hear like a car just like screeching and then we hear a thud, right? And then I looked, I see one of like our regulars and I go, I ask him, I'm like, he's in line. And I, like, I was like, hey, what, what was that? And he's like looking out the window. He's like, oh, I think someone got hit. And I go, like, two cars? And he was like, uh, there's someone laying in the street. And I was like, oh, crap. Okay. And I was, like, make, I was making drinks at the time. And then I look at my coworker, and I go, hey, cover me for a minute. And then he was like, what? And I go, just cover me, right? So he, like, comes over, and he's, you know, he takes over and making the drinks. And then I'm, like, taking my apron off. And then my boss, she was like, Nico, where are you going? And I go, I'll be right back. And then she goes, what? And I go, I'll be right back, right? So I run out and then I see, it was our, it was our FedEx guy, the one that dropped, dropped off the mail every day. He was laying in the street. So I was like, oh, damn, right? So I like, I like run to the street and then I like, he's laying there and I'm like holding his head so he doesn't, you know, in case he has like a neck injury, like you're not supposed to move your neck. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking to him and I'm getting like, I'm like, hey, what happened? You know, he, he was like, oh, I had my headphones on too loud. Across the street without looking, someone hit me. Right. And then the other person, the driver is still there. She's like crying. And, you know, I start asking him like, okay, where does it hurt? On a scale like one to ten, like how does it feel? You know, like what's the pain level at? And then he gives me all of that, all of that information. And then fire shows up. Fire shows up. And two out of the three guys that were on that, they jumped out and they were like, Nico, what do we got? Because I knew them. <laughs> I knew two out of the three guys. They jumped out, Nico, what do we got? And, I, and then I give them all the information I got. And then, they're, and then they're like, easy. So we put the we put the collar on, gave the lady oxygen, ambulance showed up, took him away. And then, you know, I said bye to the guys, went back to work, and I walked back in. Everyone was just like, Nico, what was that? Was like, <laughs> Nothing. You know? <laughs> Nothing. You didn't just tell him? You work. didn't tell him even then? No. No? I didn't tell them then. They didn't say, hey, well, uh, you need to clock out next time you go save somebody's life. <laughs> no, the, so I didn't tell them then. I told them when I had to go out to the state fire. I go, hey, I know I'm on schedule, but I'm going to be gone for a week. You know, no, you can't say no. There's more important stuff than making coffee. Yeah, so you just told them just to, don't put me on the schedule, right? They didn't make you like take vacation days or anything. No, right? okay, no, they just took me off. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't tell them why? I told them because th there was that was the only reason I had to tell them. Mm. You know, because I was going to be gone for a while. And were they surprised to, to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had no idea. Man, how many more firefighters are there like you who don't like <laughs> talk about it or anything? Is this the is it common? Can't be common. I don't know. I I I don't want to speak for other people, but even at Niners, Niners didn't know. Yeah. Well, I, I somehow I knew. I, I don't think was, remember. I think you told me you told me at the store, I think. Did I tell you? Yeah. Was it when I was I think I was I was going out to another fire. Maybe because I remember I told... Oh, were you going to miss a game? Maybe that's why you said it. I'm not sure. But I remember I told Brian. I told Brian. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be out for a week. And then he was like, okay, you know, no problem. But then I think I told Janine. Do you remember Janine? J9? Yeah. Yeah, who I could I told forget? her and she was like, what are you going out there for? 
I was like, <laughs> I got work. You know? And then I think I think I did tell you. I think I told you and Jay. Yeah. 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 I remember I remember Ricky was pissed because I didn't tell him. <laughs> Classic Rick Dog. Yeah. Cause he was a, he was the manager at the time. Yeah. But I only right. told Brian and yeah. Man, he really, so I remember, so that was when you were, so uh, I remember showing up there one time to teach him how to like use the registers and log in and everything. Mm -hmm. And he was like an hour and a half late to show up <laughs> and I called Tim and I was like, Tim, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah. Who the hell did you hide? Like, why, why is it? And he was like, hold on, hold on. I'm going to call right now. And he calls him and he's like, you need to get your ass over there right now. And it was, yeah. I guess it was Ricky's day off. Mm. But it wasn't like communicated because the people at the stadium didn't really know the people at the store's schedule unless they're sending timesheets in, mm -hmm. you know? So he went back there and, uh, you know, he's always just kind of one of those guys. He, you always kind of, you know where he stands, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, but he's a character. Yeah. Me and him didn't get along. We'll, yeah. We'll just have to, in yeah. The beginning. Yeah, I I didn't either. I didn't. He's an acquired taste. Yeah, and if he's watching like so this right too, now, <laughs> I so am I. Yeah, I am too. I feel like I tell I tell people this. Um, I feel like you either love Nico, <laughs> and you hate Nico, and there's no in between. Really? Yeah. There are people that hate you. Yes. Yes. We gotta have him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see Man, this. Man, like but I'm not very friendly. Really? Really. Like, if, if I'm cool with you, like, I'm cool with you, you know? Are we cool? Like, yeah. Okay. Whew. Yeah. Because, like... Thank God. We hire new people at the stadium, like, every year. Yeah. Well, it's you a know? hell of a turnover, though. Yes. So, I have my friends already, you know? Peter, Crystal, Stan, Eddie. And I don't like to talk to new people. Ah. Right? I don't like to talk to new people. And then... People like to, I remember in the beginning, there were people there like, because I wasn't there full time. Right. You know, I was there like games and maybe once a week. Right. Game days. And then if we were like preparing for a game maybe yeah. or something or an event, maybe. So all the store people, they were cool with like Stan and Eddie and, you know, but then they see me and then I'm, I'm cool with them. I'm cool with Stan and Eddie. But then when they see me, they're like, oh, he must be cool because he's friends with them. But I'm like, no. <laughs> no, just because you're cool with them, don't don't think we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> oh, my God. That's something my wife or my sister would say. <laughs> <laughs> so even now, even now, like, we hire all these people and Crystal, she talks to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, because she's... In charge of the store now. Oh, really? Yeah. So she she has her whole team. So when they come down, and you know they talk to like me and Peter, I look at Peter and be like, "Are we are we cool with them? Are we cool with this person? Because <laughs> if we're not, I'm not going to talk to them." Yeah, but Peter's kind of one of those guys um, that is that same way a little bit. Like he's not really there to make a whole lot of new friends, you know. P Peter's the guy to go to now. Oh, he's really? He's in charge. He's in charge of the warehouse. Wow. He's the first Asian cowboy I've ever met. <laughs> a Peter, I make this joke. Peter is a, he's a black guy that grew up in a white family in an Asian man's body. <laughs> <laughs> That's whenever, true. Whenever his friends come, they're all, you know, from North Carolina. Yeah. You know, they're brothers. Yeah, that's true. And then he was adopted by like a white family, uh -huh. but he's Thai. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of a man of the world. Yeah. Peter, I, Peter's the reason I'm still there. Oh, really? Yeah. As long as Peter's there, I will be there. Yeah. I, re I remember um, just how like, how nonchalant he is about uh, like losing chickens or losing a duck, and then having yeah. to shoot something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like yeah. it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, I killed three coyotes last night. <laughs> Whoa, three! <laughs> Holy shit! Like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, 
Like, I'm going to get some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> always with his vest on, you know, always. He's no always more got that. No, no, no vest. more vest. He's, he's, he wears that, uh, it's either like a regular black Niners hoodie or the brown salute to service from last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Pete, Pete's a salute to service guy. <laughs> I, he, I think so. I guess. He is. Yeah, he is. He I strikes don't know. me that way. Well, he's a farmer so. and a cowboy and, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he shoots he shoots coyotes on yeah. the daily. Not anymore. No? He, moved. he killed them all. He moved. Oh, he, they won then. He still, like, he still has the house. They have two houses now. Oh, they just don't live there. They just don't live there. Yeah. Oh, but it was like a farm, right? I feel yeah. like that's a, like a great place to, like, have a kid grow up. Yeah. You know? And maybe you have more, so you get free labor out of them. <laughs> I guess, yeah. That's what they do if you own a farm or if you own a restaurant. You have mm-hmm. kids to make, you know, because you can't be paying regular people. You yeah. Gotta, you got to have kids in there and get some yeah. free work, you know? Yeah. His kids are cool, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you met them? Yeah. They were just babies he brings when them I to left, work. Or just one of them was, I think. He brings them to work. Oh, really? Yeah. Man, there was one time. One of his sons wanted to play hide and seek <laughs> in the warehouse. And, you know, like our bosses are cool with Peter bringing the kids. Because if, if he can't bring the kids, Peter doesn't come to work. So how often does he bring them? Uh, not often anymore because they're in school. Oh. Well. But before, yeah, so he was playing hide and seek. And then his kid went to go hide. And then, you know, he's gone. he's hiding for maybe like 10 minutes. <laughs> and then I go, Peter, did you find him yet? And he's like, oh, I forgot to look for him. <laughs> <laughs> and goes back to work. <laughs> Did he forget or was he just enjoying his time of quiet? No. <laughs> Sometimes Peter will like come to me and he'll be like, what? I forgot what I was going to tell you. And just turn around and go back to work. <laughs> Kids will do that to you. Yeah. You know, they ha- they they take up now a certain point a certain part of your brain mm-hmm. at all times. And yep. it's just, it's always there. I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I, I used to be able to name all the dinosaurs and now I can't. <laughs> dinosaurs? <laughs> yeah. I feel like you should know that with kids. Well, I'm getting it back. You know, it's slow, uh, slow and sure, you know, but um, every once in a while though, I'll give you the curveball, you know, what's yeah. that? Dad, what's that dinosaur? Oh, I don't know. <sighs> ah, damn. <laughs> You know, I used to know, but uh, I remember when Jay used to bring his daughter, used to bring Sophia down to, um, yeah, down to the stadium. She was young. Yeah, I, you know, when he first started uh, at Candlestick, she was like um, eight years old, right? And that's the that's the age that my oldest is at right now. Jay and, was at the store. Well, no, Jay. Jay well, Jay started at the store, then he yeah. uh, got that job at Candlestick right before the last or right after the last game. So basically, yeah, yeah, because I remember Scott was there. Yeah, he took that over because Scott left, and um, he came after uh, the season was over to like clean everything out. Yeah, because you know Randy, he was like, "I need all this cleared out." Yeah, in one week, you yeah. know, because the stadium's clearing and they're mm-hmm. having that Paul McCartney concert and everything. So he he comes in there, and I like wasn't very good friends with Jay at this point. Yeah, and so he uh, he gets there and he's like, "Hey." Uh, uh, this is Sophia. And I was like, hi, Sophia. And, and she, he was like, uh, can I leave her with you for a little bit? While I clean? I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, what? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. And then he, uh, he was like, oh, I don't know. Just and I was like, entertainer. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then, so I'm like doing some work and then I'm like, uh, Hey, have you ever driven a golf cart? <laughs> you oh, know? Like, nice. so she's like, no, I'm like, oh, well, Let's, take, Let's go on. Let me show you how to drive the mood mixer, you know, which was, it used to be the, uh, the honey badger. I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. But, but then I think that one got, something happened to that where the front got messed up. Yeah. And, um, our, our list beached it on the curb. Okay. None yeah, of yeah. the wheels were touching the ground and it, the yeah. thing was on the curb somehow. Yeah. Like a skateboard grinding, you know, but mm-hmm. like, um, so then he, like we took it off and he had to like rewrap it as like the mood mixer. Okay. So I was I was teaching Sophia how to drive that around, and uh, you know she's having a good time. Yeah. And um, but I like looking back, 
looking back on that now that I have an eight year old, yeah, like if I was just starting at a job, like fuck, I don't know if I would be able to get any kind of trust in anybody to be like, hey, have <laughs> my eight year old daughter hang out with you for a little bit, yeah, you know, dude that I've known for a month or two, yeah. But you know, I, he was just a very good judge of character. Jay. Yeah. Yeah, man, he he took me everywhere. Yeah, he vouch he vouched for me for like every team, and then you know, like he he got the job at Levi's, and I was still at the store. He was like, "Do you want to be full time? You know, you want to be full time over here?" And I go, "Um, that's kind of far for me, you know." Especially for eleven twenty five an hour. Yeah, back then. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I I'll do games, and you know, when I'm not at the store, can I pick up like an extra day, you know? And then he's like, Yeah, just come, just let me know when. And then, man, I remember, I remember when we started, we were, we had the vests and the hard hats, and yeah, I still got that at the house. Same here. I think mine. Right there. Yeah, I got that same one. Yep. Man. Yeah, you got your sticker on the back. Yeah. You're officially, you officially took that safety class. Yeah. 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 And the goggles, the goggles, the vest, the goggles, yeah, the vest, goggles. hard hat at all times. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he took me on there. And then even like when he left, he was like, hey, do you want to come to Sharks? I go, I don't want to go to Sharks. Yeah. You know, like Niners, Niners is my thing. Like yeah, not a hockey fan. Nothing. No. Only football. Only football. Not Only even football. Uh, not even Giants, huh? I'll wear the hats, but <laughs> basketball kind of. Basketball kind of, but I don't like the Warriors. Oh really? What are yeah, you Kings fan? I like the Kings. Really? Yeah. Oh shit! Well, Man. you're in Kings territory here. Yeah, yeah. You I know? remember. I remember last year. Because ever since we got, ever since we turned to fanatics. They let us work for other teams. Mm -hmm. And then the Warriors just became fanatics recently. So last year during offseason, Lindsay was like, "Uh, we don't have hours here, but if you want to help out Warriors, Quakes, or Giants, you're allowed to. So... Baseball's too slow for me. Like I can't I can't do baseball. Yeah, it's a grind. Yeah, and there's so many games. It is a grind. Yeah. And you know the funny thing, like, because you know, I worked at A's. Mm-hmm. And so all these guys that were like union and commission and you know, they were glad to be there. They worked there for 50 or 60 years, yeah. some of them. And so here I am. It's like my first or second season or something, and I'm like counting down the days to the end of the season. Like, yeah. hey, everybody, only 10 more games to go. All yeah. right. And, you know, mean like, that's great for me uh-huh. because then I don't have to be there every day and like be first one there, last one to leave kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But um, for them, it was just basically me counting down to the days that they're not getting paid again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because yeah. they only get paid for the games. They're unions, so they only get paid when they sell stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not like they come in there and they sit up the day before or they take down the day after and they don't get paid for that. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of like a looking back. It's like, oh, that's kind of like it's kind of like a dick move. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> then I was just like, God, I can't I like 10 can't wait games to be out of here. 10 day homestand where you're working like it's the 10 days straight. And it's like, you don't like, oh, I, I, I don't I didn't care for baseball to no. begin with. No, yeah. And so, like, it was the sport that, like, my mom made me play. Yeah. And I go and just basically search for frogs in the outfield. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it it's different than all the other sports, right? Because I, I would be kind of wary about bringing my kids to a, fo- a football game. Mm-hmm. And I'd be kind of wary about bringing them to maybe not so much a basketball game, but, like, I brought them to the Sharks game and baseball games, right? Because baseball yeah. is more geared towards kids. You know, they have the okay. days where you can go run the bases. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And they have, I like, know you, mean. you know, little songs to sing in the middle and yeah. things, you know, just things they like that. They got a that. club. And- yeah, it's it's geared more towards kids. Yeah. And football has tried to do that a couple times with their 49ers kids club thing. Yeah. And it's never took off. No. Really. You no. know, and it just, it's just, baseball is 
more for kids. And so now I'm more likely to go to a baseball game because I have kids than mm-hmm. before. Yeah. You know, it's just a weird kind of thing. Yeah. You know, but you could like, so they let you go work at basically any, any team, any team that's fanatics. Yeah. Cause eventually the sharks weren't fanatics. Right. That was, yeah, that was due to our boy. I, yeah. <laughs> so I started working warriors Uh huh. and you know, it was easy for me cause San Francisco, it's just right there. Yeah. You know? And then I remember the Warriors played the Kings in the playoffs last year. And then I forget what radio station it was, but they set up their radio show in the store. Right? They said it in the Warriors store? In the Warriors store. And they were doing like their whole radio show from the store. And then they were like interviewing people that like Hey, what do you think of the series? What do you think it's going to go? Right. And the store was slow one time. It was maybe like a few hours before the game. So I was working and I was just walking by. And then one of the guys was like, Hey, do you want to be interviewed? Right. And I'm like, Not really. Like, I don't really like to talk, <laughs> you know, but whatever. Right. <clears throat> and then they're like, They go, What do you think the series is going to go? Right, because this, cause this is before game one. And they go, what do you think the series is going to go? And I go, Kings and Six. <laughs> and then they're like, both of their faces, they were just like, but you're wearing Warrior stuff. And I go, I just work here. <laughs> you know, like I have to wear this stuff. Like this is what pays me. <laughs> oh. So they go, Kings and Six. And I go, yeah, Kings and Six. It was close. They went to seven, but they lost. Yeah. But and now, I mean... It's that power is evening. Yeah. You know, like the Warriors aren't the Warriors that they were a couple of years ago, and the Kings nope. aren't the Kings that they were a couple of years ago. No. Nope. You know, they ha- and um, like that just means that because Warriors tickets are probably not going to go down. No. Unless they not tank. Not at all. Yeah. That just means that the Kings tickets are going to be more expensive. Yes. And uh, I remember when we first moved in here and there was that purple beam that lit up. Yeah, bro, that's so dope. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And I was asking the neighbors, like, is it is there is there aliens? Did something go on? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. And uh whenever they win. Like a couple of people didn't know. And they're like, wow, what is that? And then because they didn't win. <laughs> because yeah. they weren't winning. Yeah. You know? And now they start winning. It's like, oh, that's that's like the beam. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So now we all know. But yeah. like before then, it was just Oh, wow. We just never saw that because they weren't winning. Yeah. Also, <laughs> yeah. if you have no idea about basketball either. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it was both. It was a yeah. combination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't know anything about basketball and I didn't know that there was light <laughs> the beam. That yeah. That was a thing. I think they just started last year. No, it's been, well, it's, I think it's been going on for a couple years, right? Because it was right when I moved in here. So it had to be at least two. Okay. If I was, if Drew was here, I'd say, Drew, pull it up. How long has this been going on? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Not today, but you have to be here when he when he's here. We can do all all kinds of different features yeah. and things. Do you think there's aliens? Speaking aliens? of light the beam, there has to be out there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. They're saying all these things about the UAPs. You know What's the UAP? unidentified aerial phenomenon. Oh, they I don't they know. Used to be UFOs. Now Is they call the them news? UAPs. Yeah, man. I Haven't you seen news. like they've uh, there's been people from the military that have gone and testified in front of Congress. Seeing oh, this stuff. No, I don't pay attention to anything. Shit, the less I, The less I know, the better. Man. The aliens love you then. Man. Yeah, the less I know, the better. The other day, <laughs> my mom sent me a text. And she's like, <clears throat> I saw this clip on the news. And it's saying Camaros are like the number one stolen car in California. Not true. It's always going to be Hyundais and Kias. Because okay. they don't have transponders in the keys. Yeah. yeah. But ever since she sent me that, now it's just like, I'm walking out and like, I hope my car's there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So like, why did you have to tell me this? Like, I would not have worried if you didn't say anything. Yeah. I mean. Now it's just in my head. What you could do is get a uh, a battery disconnect installed. Mm. You know, just like a little, it's a little like, uh, it's a, a wire that they have and it has like a dial in the middle and you get out. Turn that, and nobody can start the car, even if they hotwire it, you know, because there's no power going from the battery at all. Oh, really? I don't have a key, though. It's like a push start. Yeah, you can still do it with that. Oh, yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's just it's just a different because I used to have a push start on this, and uh-huh. uh, I took it out because I it was kind of not wired right. Nothing was done right <laughs> in this. I mean, cats lived in the thing. <laughs> okay, um, but you know, um, you can, it's it's all about the main power wire, and you can get that installed. Any any uh, shop can do it. I think even like some place like Pep Boys or place oh, really? like that could do it for you. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Is that expensive? I'm not sure exactly how much it is. It's probably a couple hundred bucks. Okay, not bad. You know, but um, if you do that and you tell your insurance, you might get a discount. Mm. You know, because then it's just that harder to steal. Yeah. You know, you may you may even talk to your insurance, and depending on what insurance you have, they may even be able to recommend somebody or a shop to do that, or they may pay for half or, you know. Because these insurance companies are always looking for a way that they don't have to pay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and if you're going to help them with that, then they'll help you. Mm-hmm. Unless they're total dicks, like progressive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have progressive. Yeah, good. No, no, no. Don't. I don't have progressive. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> yeah. And they're terrible. But um, <clears throat> I, I was surprised, actually, that you got a Camaro. What made you want to get one? What do you mean? You got a Camaro. I was surprised. This is my second one. Oh, okay. I thought you had done something different to it because you had that first one. It was the uh, first one. It was a. It was like a dark gray. It was a dark gray, like a charcoal, right? Mm -hmm. It was a V6, and it was a little older than this one. It was 2015. Okay, was this a 19? 2019? 22. Ooh. Yeah. Man. Is V8? Yeah. 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 Oh, stick? No. No. Is Is it fun? Yeah, it is. It's fun, but I feel like for the longest time, I felt guilty having it. Why? Because I totaled my first one, and it was my fault. Mm. Not really my fault. What happened? But like, <clears throat> um, by my house, there's like a crosswalk. There's a crosswalk that doesn't have a stop sign or a stoplight. So someone was crossing and then the car in front of me didn't see the person until the last second. So they did a hard stop. Oh, so they skidded almost? Almost. Yeah. And then because they stopped hard, I didn't have enough time. So then I hit the person in front. Ah, shit. Totaled. Fuck. Yeah. So after that, it was between, I wanted a Jeep. Uh-huh. I wanted a Jeep, but then I test drove one and I was like, these, I don't like these. The Jeeps? Yeah. Especially too if I'm going to be, not too high up, but it, I don't know. Something about the drive was just weird. The seating position? Because you're sitting basically like it's a chair like this? Yeah. 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 It doesn't feel like a car. Yeah. So, and then also what added to that, I'd be having to drive to Santa Clara. Mm, and you that's know, not back fun and in a forth. Jeep. No, not yeah. in a Jeep. So I was like, "Go, might as well go with something I know." Yeah. So got another Camaro. V8 this time though. Last one was a V6, yeah, right? Last one was a V6. Yeah, upgrade. V8. Yeah. I did that too, actually, because I had uh, I flipped my Z28, then I upgraded to an SS. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. It's you, nice though. I like it. Yeah, man. I saw you pull up, and I was like, man, that's slick. Because I yeah. had thought I. I knew you had, I knew you still had one, but I didn't know that it was a different one because it's kind of a similar color to the point where I was like, oh, maybe I just misremembered that color. You oh, know? no, like, it's, it's black now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's black and black and red. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Everything's balling, man. Yeah, man. I hate, the thing I hate about it is like, because it's black and red, all my clothes are Niners. You know, everything's red or black. And you remember in like, Fast and Furious, where the drivers like match their cars. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> I don't want to seem like that guy. At least you don't ever get the underglow underglow lights. Then. <laughs> no, no, yeah. never. I'm not gonna add anything to it. But yeah, that's just how I feel. It's like, like people look at me like that, that guy's matching his cars. What a jerk. <laughs> I I had this I had this buddy that had an Integra that had those uh, had a body kit and had those underglow lights. Yeah. And. Um, one time, and I think it was it was like the last day of high school, right? We had just graduated, uh-huh. and he's like, 
he's like all feeling himself, everything. He's like, this is what we call a fishtail. <laughs> and so he takes his turn and he pulls the e-brake and he may have not been, and he may have not practiced this before because he would slid right over the center divide <laughs> and like busted his, uh, busted his body kit and busted the underglow lights. Yeah. And then it, cause this, the car was full. It was like me, him and two other guys at the back. Dang. And it was just like silence, right? It was just like, and then out of nowhere, he's like, well, let's see if we can still drive this piece of shit. <laughs> 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 It was a good car. You made Crazy. it into a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just stay away from those underglow lights and I think you'll be all right. Yeah. 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 I'm not, a, I'm not even a car person. No. I just, I just thought it looks cool. No, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think we're good here. I want to go take a look at it now. <laughs> oh yeah. After this, man, for sure. All right, Nico. Well, been a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I uh, will have you again. Yeah. All right, this man. Dope. See you, everybody. All right, guys.